You may be using the wrong camera app on your iPhone. Did you know Apple has a second, more capable camera app that you can download for free? It's true. The other app is called Final Cut Camera and it's available on the App Store. Here's how you can get the most out of it and up your video game, what my personal settings are, and at least one great third party alternative. Apple's stock camera app is solid and it does do a lot of great behind the scenes tricks to improve your overall video quality. Final Cut Camera though provides a lot more in terms of manual controls. When you hop into the app, it almost looks overwhelming. Many of the settings that get buried for the stock camera are presented here. On the left, you'll see this little pill with various options that have been chosen for your recording, such as frame rate and resolution. When you tap it, it expands and you can granularly adjust each of them. The bottom one has your encoding profile, HEVC compressed or Apple ProRes. Then we have HDR or standard color profiles followed by resolution, then the frame rate on top. Flipping to the opposite side, you have the shutter button in the middle, sandwiched by the media library and the front back camera toggle. Right above that shutter button is the granular controls for choosing which lens, the ultra wide 13 millimeter, the primary 24 millimeter, and the 120 millimeter telephoto, at least for my phone. That brings me to my favorite control here, what makes it largely worth using the app and substantially can increase how good your videos look. It's the zoom control. Let's jump into the stock camera app for just a moment, okay? When you wanna zoom, you've got two ways. You can pinch in and out on the screen, which is impossible to do while recording without a lot of shakiness, or you can use this on-screen wheel which is a bit more fluid, but still not great. It's still jumpy and can take some practice. This wheel, by the way, is something that not many people knew about. It's just one of the many tips and tricks for mastering the camera app that I covered in my dedicated video that you can see linked here. Final Cut Camera, though, has this slider that you'd find on an actual camera or remote. You push the bar forward or back to zoom in or out. Move it a little, it zooms very slowly. Move it to the end, it moves very fast. Look at the quality difference in a video when I'm shooting it zooming back and forth in Final Cut Camera. It's much more smooth and natural, and any time you can see how far you've zoomed in at the top, and you can swap between the cameras at the bottom. Tap the carrot, you'll see additional tray of tools like to lock the phone orientation. There is a focus button, switch from autofocus to manual focus. Create these lovely focus pool effects by sliding it up and down, which also have numerical values, which means you can dial it in before you start filming. Exposure adjustments allow you to lighten or darken what you're shooting, and there is full control over the white balance. Don't worry, all of these have like auto options still, automatic exposure, focus, white balance, etc., so that you don't have to worry about them, but you can if you want to. On the screen, you'll see two things that you don't get on the stock app. You have an audio gauge. This shows the audio levels for both the left and the right channels. Finally, you can see how much footage you can still record. In HEVC, based on this battery life, I've got about an hour left that I can film, but if I swap to ProRes, that's gonna drop substantially. Let's pause for a second. I gotta thank my sponsor for this video, ESR. If you've got an iPhone, you, you probably need to charge it at some point. And if you know anything about me, you know that I love MagSafe and Shi2 chargers, and ESR has a pair of new ones that I am totally stoked to show you. This is the ESR Qi2 3-in-1 Travel Wireless Charger. When it's folded, it's barely thicker than my iPhone. And when you open it up, you have a Qi2 charger right there on the front that'll give you 15 watts of wireless power. Then around back, you'll find a little pedestal for your AirPods or other Qi device to charge and the USB-C port where you can plug in that Apple Watch charger. By the way, this supports Apple certified fast charging, which means you can charge an Apple Watch Ultra to 100% in an hour and 40 minutes, which is four and a half times faster than other two and a half watt chargers. Since it can be used as a stand, it works great for standby mode too. See your little alarm clock, see widgets, or just watch a video. This is the ESR Qi2 mini wireless charger. It magnetically connects to the back of your iPhone, has an integrated braided USB-C cable with even a metal cover on the end of it. This will charge your iPhone at up to 15 watts of power, which is the maximum wireless charging for your iPhone 12, 13, 14, or 15. That 15 watts is super quick. Since it is Qi2 certified, you can charge your iPhone 15 Pro Max to 85% in just two hours, which is twice as fast as a standard seven and a half watt charger. 
Not only do these have great quality, but they're also really affordable. If you want to check any of them out, there's links from down below in the description. Thanks again to ESR for sponsoring this video. On iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, you can still record to an external drive too. And the settings let you manually choose which mic to use if you've got an external one connected. This app is mainly for recording video, really good video, so you won't find any photo capabilities here. Would you like to see Apple create a similar pro camera app too, or do you prefer the third party ones? Let me know in the comments which third party app you prefer if that's the case. Real quick, I want to show you the settings I use when filming in this app. These are just my normal settings, not stuff necessarily for work, just like day to day. First, I always shoot in 4K. No one wants grainy footage, and even if you don't need that high resolution, you have more options for cropping it in later if you have to edit it. I tend to turn off HDR. HDR for sure looks better, but I often will combine footage with what I shot on my camera, which is an HDR, and I don't like to have to deal with merging the two to look the same. If you plan to just use it on your phone or share it with people, leave HDR on. I film primarily in HEVC, it's so much smaller, you don't want to shoot in ProRes all the time, most of you probably never at all, uh, and then I go at 30 frames per second. Usually the grid helps me, so I'll turn that on in the settings, I keep the subject on any of the third lines for proper framing, and I use manual focus a lot too, so I turn on focus peaking. This will accentuate the edges that are in focus, it's much easier to identify than trying to discern if something is slightly blurry or sharp. Sometimes I enable the overexposure indicator, it just helps highlight things that will be super white or blown out, but usually I just kind of roll with it. This app is entirely free and has a lot of tricks to it, but there's some awesome third party ones too. Recently we saw the launch of Kino. It's another manual app but has the added benefit of a bunch of in-app filters. I've been really liking Kino so it's worth taking a look at. I also use the Moment Pro Camera app. This one was recently featured by Apple at WWDC and lets you install LUTs plus has settings for creating your own presets. Final Cut Camera though has one big trick up its sleeve and it's only for certain users. Multi-cam support. Users who have Final Cut Pro for iPad can choose up to four iPhones as different camera angles. Right now I'm filming myself with these camera angles and I have full control of the production here on my iPad. I can move between each angle, I can zoom in and out and more. It's very cool. There's almost nothing like it. If you want to give Final Cut Camera a spin for yourself, I put a link down below in the description. Check it out and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Otherwise, as always, be sure you're subscribed with those notifications turned on so you don't miss my latest video or Apple news. Oh, this has been awesome. I, I wish this came out sooner. I love shooting video with this.